Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title, we are going to be looking at the second half of Sonic 3, which is called Sonic and Knuckles. I'm excited to review this. Like I told you in my last review, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm excited to jump into the second half of the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, we finally made it to the final 2D Sonic title for the Genesis. Well, actually, despite this game being marketed as a brand new game, this was actually intended to be a continuation of Sonic 3. Due to cartridge limitations and deadlines, Sega decided to split the game into two. The release of Sonic & Knuckles introduced something called lock-on technology. Actually, this was pretty innovative for the time. The cartridge had a lock-on adapter to allow bonus content to be unlocked with previous Sonic titles. Pretty cool. If you locked on Sonic 3, you get to experience the game as it was originally intended, as one title. In my opinion, this is the best way to play Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. This would give you a more complete experience in my opinion. It also gives the story a better flow and you can truly take in the scope of the game. This is the best way. If you locked on Sonic 2, you can simply play Sonic 2 as Knuckles. Not really something that I really care to do, but it's still pretty cool regardless. Knuckles is now a playable character in both Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Knuckles has the option to glide and climb walls if needed. Knuckles also has the ability to run through alternate pathways which can offer alternate level design. Knuckles cannot jump as high as Sonic, and he also lacks the ability to use the Insta Shield. Story-wise, Knuckles allows players to see the story from a different perspective, which is cool. Story-wise, this game picks up right where Sonic 3 left off. Sonic is still chasing Eggman while Knuckles is still giving us a hard time. Later in the game, you find out Knuckles is protecting something known as the Master Emerald. The Emerald is extremely powerful and valuable. Of course, Eggman wants that power for himself and essentially brainwashes Knuckles to believe Sonic is the one who is after to steal the Emerald. Knuckles finally realized what's going on and now Sonic and Knuckles must work together to reclaim the Master Emerald from Eggman. Gameplay is essentially the same as Sonic 3 because like I stated earlier, these titles were meant to be one complete experience. You still have your high speed second cool stage transitions, and also the elemental shields make a return. In terms of stages, I like these stages quite a bit. I still think the Sonic 3 half of this game has the better lineup, but overall these stages are still pretty fun to play through. Mushroom Hill Zone is a fun, high speed level. I love the color palette they use for this. How it goes from a fall aesthetic to more of a winter type feel, I love the way the stage looks. Flying Battery Zone takes place on a ship. I love some of the platforming that this level have you do, but be careful because there are plenty of death traps and many bottomless pits here. So like I said, be careful. Sandopolis Zone. Ugh, Sandopolis Zone. I don't think this level is hard necessarily, it's just, you know, tedious. This level definitely overstays its welcome, I never look forward to playing this stage. I do like the gimmick of having to keep the lights on in the pyramid, but again, this stage is just way too long. Lava Reef Zone is a fire-based level, so the fire shield will be your best friend here. There are plenty of fire projectiles and lava here. I love the music here. Next to Ice Cap Zone, this is probably my next favorite track in the entire game. Hidden Pallet Zone is where we face off with Knuckles. This fight is pretty easy, especially with the instant shield technique. We bop him a couple times and we move on to the next zone. Easy. Sky Sanctuary Zone is where we face off with Mecha Sonic. I guess Metal Sonic is still recovering from our run-in during Sonic CD, but Mecha Sonic kind of reminds me of the Silver Sonic fight in Sonic 2. I honestly never really care for this design, but I guess it works. Next we have the final zone, the Death Egg Zone. This level is definitely the most challenging in the entire game, but can be fun with this anti-gravity gimmick. If you collected all the Chaos Emeralds, you can fight the true last boss and regain the Master Emerald. Super Sonic makes a return in this game once you collect all the Chaos Emeralds. Just like Sonic 3, you play through Blue Sphere and collect all the Emeralds. If you are playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you have the option to unlock Hyper Sonic by collecting the Super Emeralds. Who is hypersonic, you may ask? Let's just say this guy is overpowered to the max. He is faster than supersonic, has a screen nuking technique, and has a cool after image. Wow. Do I recommend Sonic and Knuckles? Absolutely. 
I highly recommend you guys play this game the way it was originally intended, with Sonic 3 and Knuckles as a complete package. I feel this is the best way to enjoy this title. Alright guys, well that will wrap up today's review. I want to thank each and every one of you for the positive feedback you guys have been giving me on these Sonic based reviews. When we come back together for a retro review, I want to take a small break from Sonic and we're going to play something a little different. Next time we're going to be looking at one of my favorite games of all time, which is called Nights into Dreams. So if you guys are familiar with Sonic Team and the Sega Saturn, you guys should be familiar with this franchise. But if not, well, that's what my review is for. So alright guys, with that being said, it's been fun. I'll see you guys next time and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, leave a boy a comment, show me some love, you know what I mean? So I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace.